Hi guys and welcome to the next lesson. Now let's first rename the artboards. We have home, so let's press Command R and this is Lamborghini. Then we need M4 and Ferrari. As we are creating more artboards, this will just you know let us uh, keep the order and let's Command D duplicate it. I want to create the screen for details for this car and first let's delete the interactions. If you leave the interactions it might not uh, run well in the preview. So just let's delete it and let's rename it as well to Ferrari details. Now what I want to do is I want to hide those elements. I want to animate from this more info button and I want to hide the element so that this guy will go up, animate up. So you can either delete them so that they disappear or you can move the items from uh, this artboard so that they simply move. And we'll do that for a mask header too. We're going to position it right here and I'm pressing shift and arrows on the keyboard to move it 10 pixels or just an arrow to move it uh, one pixel up or down. And now let's unlock Ferrari. We don't need Lamborghini and M4. Let's only leave details free. Okay, so the way you can reorganize the elements is either you can delete them or you can move them to a different spot. And if you move them, uh, they will simply animate out of the screen. So I'm going to move this one uh, up. Now let's select mass headers and let's move it up like so. I want to select Ferrari. And by the way, I don't need Lamborghini and M4, so let's get rid of it, as well as details one and details two. So let's clean this up a bit. Now let's move the Ferrari like so. And I also want to make it maybe a bit smaller like this. So I can have almost the whole car appearing here. And now uh, for those details and play and more info, we're just going to stick to it. We're going to leave it because this will be all covered by a uh, de details page. So let's press R on the keyboard and let's create the rectangle like so. You can make sure that this is positioned on the X axis. I need zero on X. Y is not important. I, pre I press tab to go to the next field. Now, wheat is uh, maybe 100% for a start. And let's now make it a bit smaller. So I press option and just make it smaller. And also, I want to have rounded corners, but only for the top corners. So let's press return. Let's select those um, corners. And now let's change the radius like so. OK. Now, let's. Uh, return accept it and change the field colors that we have dark color like this one now let's move this rectangle up so that it covers all the different details we won't delete them so it, i just wanted to go from the bottom and cover everything uh, up to this point now let's create a text frame and draw a text frame like so and paste some ferrari details that i've uh, prepared now let's move it to the left hand side as well as I want to increase the line height. Now I think it looks so much better. And also maybe even 21. So that's, yeah, I think it's okay. Now you can uh, create a line inside of Studio either with the rectangle tool and create a small rectangle, or you can press P on the keyboard and uh, simply create the line with the pen tool because there is no line tool. But if you click once with the pen tool, then you can press and hold Shift to hold proportions and to have the straight line and now press return to accept it. Now, if you go to the borders of the line, you can click here and just use keyboard arrows to adjust the size of this. So let's stick uh, to three and let's make it slightly darker like so. And this line will be for our next section. Let me duplicate this field and let's have previous right here. Mm, previous rights and uh, let's make it auto and uh, capital letters. By the way, you can't really bold anything here. And this is correct because you obviously have to change the um, font itself, not to bold it like Fox bold it. But in order to do this, you simply can press Command B as well. And this will change it to the default bold, which is heavy for Avenir. So we're going to stick to that. And let's maybe move it a bit to the bottom. Now for the previous rights, let's once more duplicate this field and let's say this was 29th of June 2019 and also let's duplicate this one option shift drag and let's position it to the right and let's have 
the option to preview the mm, route. Okay, now let's bold it and also change the color. I want to change the color to one of our colors, maybe this uh, yellow. And now one more line that I need here to separate two lines that I had is that would be one pixel and uh, maybe let's change opacity slightly so that it's barely visible like this. And also now let's select uh, all those details and copy and, and simply paste them, let's duplicate them here. Let's uh, create nice spacing for these elements. And OK, now let's create one more section. And for this uh, other section, let me uh, have everything selected and press Command-G to group it all together. Those are our details. Let's move the details slightly to the top just for now. Let's Command-click and make it higher. And also, let's duplicate this previous rights and have one more section here, OK? And this is the section for uh, some other members of the club who also drove this car. So who else loves this car? And let's have some mock-up for the avatars here. So just simple ovals there. Now let's select and duplicate this guy. And the safest way to do it is just to press Option and eventually Shift now uh, to hold the line. Now you uh, have to position them correctly. And it's not always that easy. Well, you have the measurements, uh, but they don't always you know, fit. But what you can do, and by the way, if you want to check out the measurements, you can select any of the elements and then press Option on the keyboard. And if you hold Option on this element, you'll see the um, measurements between this element and its parent. So basically, this is how it looks. You can also hover over this element, and then you'll see the measurements between the element and the and the artboard. And also, if you hover over different elements, you'll see the measurements between this elements, those elements, and the one you've selected. So this is pretty nice if you want to select, uh, for example, this uh, text and just measure the uh, the pixels between those two um, fields, it's as easy as pressing Option and, and seeing the measurements. But if you want to position elements, the best thing is to select them all and just use the spacing options. So in this case, we're going to distribute them horizontally like this. And yeah, that's it. So let me, yeah, let's make sure that those ovals also go to details. Let's select them and let's move them here. And what I also like to have inside the details are the buttons that appear here. So what I can do is I can use those buttons that I already have on Ferrari Details Artboard, but instead I'm simply going to copy and paste them one more time into the details um, group, like so. And this is simply because I don't want any animation to mess up those layers because if they are auto connected between the between the artboards, it, they might I don't know fly away or something like this because we want them to stay at the bottom. So uh, the safest way is to m change the name uh, names for the buttons. So let's have buttons one and also button fill one and button outline one. So now this is separate copy and and it won't affect the animation. Now one more thing I want to tweak is let's select this rectangle and also let's add some effects. So there are different effects that you can add. There is shadow and also inner shadow. So it's kind of self-explanatory. So let's just add shadow and I want minus 10 for the X position, 0 for Y position and maybe let's blur it uh, so that we have 30 pixels blur for this shadow. You can obviously adjust its um, color. And it's uh, set by default, it's set to 50% opacity for the black color. So we can move it up or just move it down. I'm going to leave it around 50%. Now let's select the details group. And what I want to do is I want to copy this group and paste it on the Ferrari artboard because I want this group to animate from the bottom. So let's paste this here and let's move it to the bottom. I mean, not entirely outside this artboard. If you move anything outside the artboard like so, you'll see that this is no longer part of the artboard. So let's make Command Z. So what you can do is just put it in the uh, very bottom and then use Shift and down arrows to position it so that it's outside, but still it stays on the artboard. And it has to be on top of the layer stack so it covers everything. And what I want to do instead of showing all the details at once is here I want to show only 
part of those details, maybe like that. And then if you cut this text a little bit, users might you know get the grasp that you can scroll it. So maybe let's make Ferrari a bit a bit bigger. We have some space here. And now let's create the transition. So let's select more info and this has to be a button, but in order for this prototype to be you know more com comfortable to use, I'm going to add the rectangle on top of it and uh, just make the fill opacity zero. And this is just a heat area. So it's easier to, to click it, to tap it. And then let's press C and create the transition. Trigger is the tap, and then we have motion. Let's make the timing for this animation one second, the duration. And this is simply because if you have micro interactions, 0.3 of a second is OK. But if you transition the whole screen, 0.7 or even one second is better. Now let's edit the timeline and let's take a look at how it behaves, how it animates. So I'm just going to scrub it. Yeah, and I think it looks really, really nice. So what you can control is obviously uh, the timing and spacing of this animation, the, mm, the um, effect for the details to appear. Maybe we want to change it from ease both to simply pop. And let's preview this so that it appears faster. And then we have the transition of the car. Yeah, maybe let's make this pop quicker and start a bit later so that First, the car animates, and then we have this pop effect, like so. You can experiment with it. So let's go back. And now what we have to do in order to scroll uh, this uh, artboard is go to the artboard itself and make it, simply make it higher. The problem that we have is that basically those elements are mm, pinned to the different things on the artboard. So we have to make sure that this mask headers is pinned to the top as well as let's select Ferrari and let's make sure that it's pinned to the top as well. Now we can change the size of uh, this and let's make it like that. And where are our buttons? Somewhere to the bottom. So let's bring them up again like so. And the second thing that you have to do is to change the behavior of this entire artboard so that it can scroll. Well, for now, scrolling is set to none. But what I want to do is I want to uh, select this vertical scrolling. So you have horizontal, vertical, or both directions. Let's stick to vertical for now. And let's preview this artboard. So this is how it looks. And now I can scroll it. So it's pretty cool. However, uh, I want those items to stay fixed uh, in position and only this element, the, the bottom element, to uh, go up. So if I select the element, there is no option to scroll this element individually. Instead, what I have to do is select all the other items, so mask headers, for example, as well as Ferrari, as well as this um, avatar badge. And what I want to do is pin those items uh, to this exact point in, on the artboard. And in order to pin them, I simply use this little icon. This is fixed position for those elements. And if I do so, and let me go back to the preview, I can now scroll this artboard. However, those elements will stay uh, pinned and fixed in position. So this is what I wanted. Now let's uh, take a look if the transition works. Let's select Ferrari and let's press Command P, which is the shortcut to the preview. And let's click on more info. Well, it looks pretty fine, but we had a little bit of a glitch on the buttons. So let's select the buttons. And well, let's just for now right click on the buttons and uh, let's detach them uh, from the component. I think that this might be the reason. So let's press Command P once more, preview. Let's click on more info. And yes, now everything looks great. Well, this is a bit of a problem, I think, with the beta of Studio. So uh, yeah, just a small bug that I think that they will fix pretty fast. So this is it for this lesson. And I'll see you in the next one.